Tintin. Yeah, we're on the Tintin. There's Amon, and we're up on the shed. Up on the shed. This is the shed, shed B. There's the wood shed down there. And this is my new solar install. I thought I'd try a monorail approach. This bit of wood I picked up on the beach at Foxton a few days ago. Now it's all been cleaned up and painted. You'd think it was a bought one. I used these angle brackets of aluminium and a bit of silicone and just, you know, leg bolts into there. There we go. Tech screws, whatever you want to call them. Um, and I thought, well, you know, this is a 50 watt panel, 50 watt polycrystalline panel. And I thought, well, it's not that big. One, one, four by two should be enough. So, and it looks like it is. This is pretty solid. I might put a third bracket here to sort of push that down. As you see, there's a little bit of movement there, but nothing to worry about. And um, yeah, that's what I intend to do. What I intend to do is put um, four of these here so then they'll be in parallel with these two here and that'll feed my 24 volt battery that's in this shed. Yeah, we're going around the tins and now I'm just going to say one more thing about what I've done here. And these are also what I wanted to show. These are my poor man's MC4s. And it's basically just a bullet connector that's been beefed up with heat shrink and a few other things. I'll make a video at some point of how I made these because I think these are quite handy. I'm just going to complete these gaps with these reels of lecky tape just around there and there. And they should be pretty much as waterproof as... Yeah, that's right, red and black. And they should be pretty much as waterproof as an MC4. So, the solar panel didn't come with cables out of it, but the reason why I wanted to do this with really easy connectors, the reason why I haven't used my connection jars or anything like that for this time around is because as I add these panels, I want to be able to connect them up easily. Although this will be a 24 volt system, so I'll have to run another pair of cables up once I do the first two for the next ones. At the moment, you're thinking, how can I connect this to my 24 volt battery? It's only a 12 volt panel. Well, I can't, so I'm going to connect it to a 12 volt bank that I'm working on down here, which is going to be the subject for another video. But once I get two of them, I'll connect it to the 24 volt bank, and when I get the th three of them, I'll connect that third one to the 12 volt, and so on and so on. Getting more power in the shed, because these will be the panels that ultimately get the dishwasher off the grid, hopefully this summer. Okay, and there we are. Just sort of make a little end piece. There they are now, leaky taped up. No, there's Around pros. Yeah, well, whatever that means. Um, as pro as you could might expect, and I, I personally think this is probably just as watertight as an MC4 and much better conductor because a these bullets are about twice the, or not maybe not twice, one and a half the diameter of the MC4 pins and also you actually get to see them and push them right in you're right there when you push them in so you sort of know they're going to be making a good connection yeah once that tapes around they'll be waterproof as so i'll make a video on how to make these and there we have it yeah there we have it there we have it so you, so you made this around the tintin I don't know what you mean by that. Anyway. Oh, there's the... It's what we call the sun valve. It's just a solar panel, old garden light thing that's been retasked as a light sensor. It used to turn on and off the lighthouse, but now it just turns on and off the ding-dongs. Well, sets off the ding-dongs. Basically a doorbell that comes on at the end of the day, which is quite handy. Especially if you're working with solar, but even if you're not, Tells you when you get the washing in, that kind of thing. Anyway, that'll do. That'll do.